everyone. A very warm welcome to the SMB Connect web presentation on creating opportunities in adversity. You all are logged in as listen only mode for one hour long webinar. You can communicate through the chat function only. We will have 45 minutes of presentation followed by 15 minutes of Q&A. So today we have with us Sandeep Andre, who is a founder and director of SMB Connect and Rajneesh Singh, the managing director of Simply HR. As you all are aware, businesses in India are currently battling the chaos unleashed by coronavirus pandemic. Complete lockdown and the resulting changes in economic environment have hit some startups across industries. So we will be discussing today the avenues of growth which can help you stay afloat in these times of economic distress. I would like Sandeepan to tell us more about this webinar. Over to you, Sandeepan. Good afternoon, friends, and thank you very much uh, for joining us. Also, greetings on the occasion of Ramnavi. I think it's a very apt day for us to host a webinar uh, which talks about creating opportunities in adversity. Uh, I am sure with all of us put together uh, as an organ, as, as the uh, organization head, as individual, and as the citizen of this country, we will definitely overcome the current uh, situation which has been there for last few uh, months. Uh, the webinar is about understanding how we as a startup organizations, as owners of startup organizations, as partners and, and, and people who are stakeholders of startup organizations can create opportunities for themselves and how uh, 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 use this uh, time lag or the time we have uh, which has not been spending on our day-to-day -day work can help us uh, creating a better organization for future. So we have Rajneesh. So let me just introduce you to Rajneesh. Rajneesh is the managing partner for H Simply HR which is in the business of end-to-end -end HR solutions, focusing on predominantly startups and small and medium enterprises. They've been uh, serving the SMEs and startup organization through HR advisory support, providing HR outsource support, hiring, training, and HR technology support. He's a very good friend of mine. We've been, uh, I, I know, uh, know Rajneesh from last nearly around eight to nine years when we first met at one of the SMB Connect events and the friendship has really grown and he has been a constant support for SMB Connect and the SME and Startup Network. Uh, prior to starting uh, Simply HR, Rajneesh was with uh, Group uh, Network 18 as the Group HR Head. Apart from that, he has worked with uh, PNG, Vodafone, uh, the Obera Group uh, with over three decades of rich experience. I'm sure he can definitely add a lot of value to our discussion today and being a managing partner he is also going through the similar kind of a dynamic situations yeah. which we are uh, all facing as due to this lockdown so let me not take much time and welcome rajneesh to share his thoughts and views on this particular topic welcome rajneesh thank you very much uh, sandeepan uh, it's an uh, absolute pleasure to be uh, part of this uh, interesting webinar that SMB Connect team has put together. Uh, I put together a deck for the benefit of everyone uh, so that there is some structure to the kind of discussion we are going to have today. Uh, and uh, like it was mentioned, we will be taking about half an hour to 40 minutes uh, of my talking uh, I would definitely expect a lot of questions from uh, the attendees. Uh, it will be my pleasure to take up the questions one by one after I'm done with the presentation. Uh, so first of all, uh, welcome to this interesting webinar. Like Sandeepan mentioned, we are going through some very unique, unprecedented times in our lives. Uh, everybody is impacted, uh, whether you are a startup, whether you are a small mid-sized company or whether you are a large organization it's just that the impact is different for every other organization uh, a startup will be hit differently sme will be hit differently and a large organization will be hit differently uh, what will remain as a constant is the way we are working now where uh, almost globally everybody is working from home 
uh, which could bring in a huge amount of change at the workplace. Uh, our way of working might really significantly change whenever things get normal. Uh, and, and that's the big question. Nobody has an answer to when things will become normal. Uh, so we are all uh, groping in the dark right now. Uh, but like Sandipun mentioned, this is the opportunity, this is the time uh, to really uh, introspect, think a lot, and, and, and really uh, look around what is happening around us. Uh, so I'll, I'll take you forward with my presentation. Uh, so I'll start with a little quote, uh, which I found was very interesting. Uh, so the quote is from Maxwell Maltz, who was a very famous American cosmetic surgeon. Uh, he said, uh, close scrutiny will show that most situations are opportunities to either create or stay where you are. So that's an, that's an important uh, comment that, that you can hear. So either as a startup founder, you decide to do something more different or you decide just to stay where you are and, and you just collapse. Uh, so very clearly when we talk about uh, the way the topic was creating opportunities in adversity, the very, very first important mindset that each one of us need to create is, I need to be looking at this not as a threat, but more as an opportunity. And that is where this quote becomes very, very uh, critical. I'll move to the next slide. Uh, so I'll just take you through a bit of a little journey of Simply HR, uh, which I thought I, I should share at this uh, point of time. Just take two minutes. Uh, we have been in business since January 2011, and uh, we have been doing some interesting work with startups and SMEs. Uh, we, in 2014, we uh, developed our own in-house HRMS tool, uh, which is being now extensively used after five years. Uh, so that is something that we are offering to a lot of startups and SMEs where you can do HR online. Uh, we also curated an event uh, vertical called Simply Fest uh, for startups again, for young entrepreneurs that we kicked off in 2016. And in 2020, now we are about 26 people, strong company based out of Delhi NCR with presence in Bangalore and Mumbai and also in Chandigarh. Uh, the four uh, brands, as, as, as I would call them, Simply HR is, is the mother brand, as you see there. Simply is the is e-tool the e from Simply HR. Uh, that's the HRMS software that I talked about. Simply Evolve is our training vertical, uh, I think with the uh, kind of advent or with the surge in the online thing, a lot of things probably you can expect from us on the training domain also. And we'll do more of that as, as we move forward. And of course, the last uh, little brand that we created was Simply Fest, where we typically the tagline, as you would say, we celebrate entrepreneurship. Uh, again, why we call it celebrate entrepreneurship? Because moving forward, we believe is the entrepreneurs who will be really creating the jobs. And though that is, that is where we see a huge opportunity for everyone or anyone who's thinking of starting their own business. Uh, some of the business, some of the offerings that we provide, HR advisory, consulting, we do HR audits, we do end-to-end -end outsourcing of HR, uh, there is talent acquisition, uh, process automation, like I mentioned, and then learning and development, and then payroll and statutory compliance outsource as well. So those are broadly the six areas that we typically uh, offer as, as our services. I'll quickly jump into the main topic now of today. Uh, and the way uh, the, the picture shows, I'm sure all of you are going through that situation right now. Uh, we are all staring at the screen at home. Uh, we are definitely relaxed, but I'm sure somewhere we are also quite worried and, and, and that's, that's, that should be the case. So I think that is where we need to really think the big question, what can I do internally? So one, I'm assuming most of the attendees here are running their own companies and they are at different stages of their business. Uh, some of you could have just started maybe some months back, some of you maybe some years back. So it depends where you are, but the big question is, this, the question that you're looking at right now is, how do I manage this situation internally in my organization? And some of the things that I really strongly recommend you should be doing, and, and here are the pointers that 
I want to wish uh, put forth for all of you to really mull over, to think, to really discuss within your teams, get onto a platform, and, and I'm sure you're doing that more often, but that's the way forward that needs to be really uh, uh, into spending time on. So that, that's very critical. The very first thing that you should be really looking at is please revisit the business model in the scenario that has come up now to us. Very, very critical is, does this business now that I'm doing, how does it really shape up in the scenario that I am right now in? Uh, it is very, very critical to see uh, the longevity of the model, uh, uh, the way we have we are structured. I think that itself will get questioned. A uh, lot of things around not only the product, the services, the customers, everything will get questioned. And that is where I need to really sit down, get back to the drawing board and really start looking at what is working, what is not working. Uh, when I I'm, And I'm going to use the word revisit for every point that I'm going to share because this is the time to look into the future, which is looking so uncertain. So if wish it was very certain about when times will change. But I think even given that situation also, if, if whatever little future I can see, I need to really revisit the business model that I have with me and really have a close look as, as to what will work, what will not work whenever the novel, normalcy returns. So if I'm in a business which I very clearly see, it will collapse. I think it's a time to really give a very serious thought of, are we burning money? Are we burning energy? Are we burning manners? Uh, and, and, and is it a time to really uh, take a very hard call on the business that we are running? So the business model becomes the very first point that you should be revisiting and taking a very, very hard call, not an emotional call. You are a businessman, so please stay away from emotions. That's the one message when you're talking about business model. All entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs like me are also struggling with this, that the baby that we created is now suddenly threatened. Uh, but at the end of the day, reality needs to be embraced and we need to be very, very unemotional in this whole situation that we are in right now. Number two, very critical would be to revisit the product and the services that we are providing. Again, very, very critical is to look into the market. Is there scope for the product or the service that we are providing through our business? So it will be linked to the business model, but I want to make it a very specific point uh, per se and, and really highlight that you need to really look at who are who are going to be the users or the consumers of, of this product or this service. And that's a call again needs to be taken as a very, very, uh, uh, you know, you need to really detach yourself that, okay, this is a product probably has no shelf life now and it will exhaust it will disappear so that's a call that i need to take that okay and why am i doing this and why am i pushing a product which probably has no shelf life left now so that's another call that i need to take very very from a distance collectively if you're a bunch of founders if you're a bunch of partners all of you need to get together and really take a final call do we need to really continue to sell or offer that we are offering to the market the third thing that you need to really revisit is the cost. And, and that's the biggest factor I'm sure all of you are really struggling with. All of us are struggling right now. And every organization is taking one step at a time. Most of the organizations with the, I'm just talking right now of the manpower cost, which itself is a big chunk of cost for most of us. And which is where a lot of calls are being taken. What kind of cost cutting we need to do with manpower. And to begin with, very, very clearly, majority of the companies in the March salary have already initiated salary cuts. Uh, and, and there are plenty of examples of also how the top leadership has already decided to not take salary till this whole pandemic is, 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 is around. And, and that is a very remarkable step for a leadership to really stand up and take a call. Look, I'm not, not going to take a single penny, but I'm going to ensure that my team doesn't suffer. Uh, so as much as possible, the cost cutting, especially the salary cutting, can it start from top and then go down to middle and then go down finally to the junior level? 
I think most of the organizations I have seen or I've, I have advised very, very clearly the bottom people are absolutely untouched at this point of time. We don't know how April will play out, what kind of game plan will change, how the whole Corona thing, either it blows up or it, it just kind of uh, passes away. We don't know. Uh, but yes, it is very early days right now. But yes, you need to very clearly revisit the cost that you have. If you are renting out an office, please, for heaven's sake, tell your landlord that you are exiting the place and you are happier operating from home, which means your team needs to be equipped technologically to operate from home and thereby save the rental cost, which is another a significant chuck for a lot of startups as 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 a fact as a cost factor so those two things the salary and the rentals is something that i would very strongly recommend are are steps that need to be taken and you need to move fast on that so you need to really revisit that ensure that you know the your your lower bottom people remain unaffected the others take the brunt for now and that is the whole thing on cost right now any other licenses or something that you have, you subscribe to certain things. I think about time to take a pause, discontinue. You can always resubscribe, take up the license again. I think those are the things that you need to think through when you're talking cost. Uh, the fourth point on, on the cost I would look at is revisit how much technologically or automated you are. I think this, this is the opportunity. If you're a brick and mortar company, a very important uh, is the time to really see where all technology can be leveraged in my business. How much of automation can be brought in? And this is the time to really think, huddle, reach out to some tech wizards, seek their opinion, seek their mentor mentorship and really guidance to see how we can, you know, some of the products that we are offering or some of the services that we are offering, can it be done online? and probably more efficiently. So this is the time again to look at how technology can be utilized, can be exploited, can be explored. I think that is something that each entrepreneur really needs to take a look in as to how much we are technology savvy right now, how much is my product really oriented towards technology and how much I still need to do. So this is a catch up time that you've got. I think very, very important is to really get your tech team or consult tech people to get more automation in-house. The next revisit, I would say, is about the systems and processes that you have in your organization. Uh, very important, this whole work from home has already disrupted a lot of practices that we would have had if we were operating in an office. Uh, those need to be relooked. A lot of policy changes need to be relooked. You need to really, uh, it could be simple things, how leaves are being managed, how attendance is being managed. These are little, little things that need to be really looked at, reviewed, and really you need to reframe everything. So very, very important again is to quickly move up off the block and start working on the system so that end of the day, like I said at the beginning, nobody has a clue how long all this is going to last which means I need to very quickly bring in systems and processes and policies, which is going to keep me going, which is going to keep my team going. And there is little chaos in, in, in the system and in the organization. So these, these are some of the revisits that I thought I would, I would share with all of you. So number one, the model, number two, the product services, the cost, how much technology automation has happened, and of course the systems and processes and the policies. So that broadly brings me to a situation where you are looking at what do I do with the organization? Uh, and, and I touched a bit of what I'm going to take a talk about in the next slide, which is the next question which I'm struggling with. What can I do for my team? And this is where I, I, I would urge and which I touched upon uh, earlier in, in, in when I was talking about cost. This is an opportunity for all founders, all startup people to really think out of the box how we can still hold on to our team. If you see the list of things that I am talking about and things that are bothering you right now or some of the steps that you could be taking, the last thing that I have written is job cut. Because many of us might jump into a situation of saying that, look, it has become now unsustainable and I just can't even pay one month of salary. 
yes if that is the situation if you think your business has reached that stage please for heaven's sake then please take a very hard call and if you need to let go people please let go so that is that is a clear direction that i'm providing but if you can if you're able to manage with the kind of cuts that i mentioned about earlier and and, and like i mentioned here first of all whatever leaves are there of your team tell them to consume that 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 means it will all be treated as leave with pay so that this they, they're still getting paid for this and and then get into a situation where you start doing salary cuts and on the salary cuts i spent a lot of time of talking about where the cut needs to start and how much we need to do as a ballpark number i can share with you like i mentioned at the very top people are not taking salaries at the next level at a senior leadership level almost 50% cuts are happening and as you go down there's 30% there's 20% and like i mentioned at the very bottom so far zero salary cuts so which is what you can look at as a model build it around ctcs that so much of salary to so much of salary this much cut is what i can do so this from from this much to this much uh, ctc this is the cut i can do again clear opportunities to really become more savvier around your money management number 3 very important is these are i mean it's it's so ironic that we got hit by this virus at the time when at the financial year one it was ending and lot of us were in the performance appraisal process where on april 1 typically lot of increments get announced or during the month of april lot of appraisals happen and we typically announce increments around this month or sometime in may or june that typically has got impacted big time and and i think very clearly it is important that this gets delayed or you just take a call to making no increments this year again purely uh, to make people understand in the team that right now this is not a priority a this really falls down in the priority right now and trust me most of the employees majority of the employees would appreciate understand this whole thing that why the increments either are not being given or they are being delayed again i am using the word delayed plus but please understand again you have no clue on the time frame when all this is going to get over so you can't even commit a date so please for heaven's sake don't commit any date just use the word it is being delayed or if you think we just can't pay we are going to skip one year of increment just go ahead and do that that is that is a better thing to do the fourth thing very important is also to utilize time to reskill your uh, uh, workforce and there again lot of online courses are bound to come up in this time when when we are going to go when things are going to be really uh, on a work from home mode and that is where as a as a startup founder as an entrepreneur i need to be looking at what are the skill sets that i can bring into play where especially if i am going where i am revisiting my business model where i am revisiting the product and services so there is an opportunity where people are working work from home so this is an opportunity to really reutilize how much of reskilling we can do for people and and they are going to love that for you i mean that you remembered you did something really different you made them more valuable the last thing is 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 job cut and and which like i mentioned if you are in a situation where you don't have any other option go ahead and do it but again do it in a very humane manner just don't tell people that you're not required for tomorrow please read all their employment contracts and the employment letters and please honor whatever the termination terms were there just be again you need to be seen as a leader who was really considerate and was sensitive in such a time these are times which is beyond your control these are times which is beyond the employees control so we can't really come down heavily on employees and really not be fair to them so you need to be fair in this whole environment in this whole thing i think very important my again advisory to lot of uh, entrepreneur friends and lot of startups people has been you need to do a very solid communication if you have not done so far it's time to write down very interesting one little paragraph two paragraph three paragraphs share what you are going through as a founder what you wish to do for the organization what you wish to do for the team uh, if you are in a condition to specify what kind of for instance percentage cuts are going to happen specify that in the mail it's these are the times for you to communicate a lot people are looking up to you 
So it's very, very critical in this juncture not to go silent because silent will raise more rumors than anything else. So it's very important you get down on the email, draft a very interesting email, which really appeals, which really motivates, which really keeps the hope alive for the entire team. And thereby, trust me, it has been it has been doing magic for many organizations where the employees have been responding immediately and saying and thanking the management that you know you have thought about us and you've taken these tough steps in the interest of everyone. So I think that becomes very, very important. And while we are at the employee, very important is also a mail to go out to your to your uh, customers, I think to the clients. I think that is the other piece that should go out that while we might have temporarily got affected and while we are utilizing this time to really re-engineer ourselves, we will be back to you in, 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 in good times as things become normal. So those two communication I strongly recommend. Uh, one is internal to the team, the other is external to the uh, to the clients and customers where you can really reach out. I think those those th that's my second. So one one is I'm looking at internal at my organization. Number two, the very key stakeholder in the whole play is team. And I also talked about the client, so, so keep in touch with them as well. And then I, I move forward to uh, the next slide where I'm going to talk about some of the, uh, as I would call it, what is the, so what are the two, three things that I need to be really doing? Uh, so when when I talked about revisit, so here are the three things that, that you could be looking forward to in future. Very important, research industry and market. I think if this is an opportunity to do something beyond what you have done, probably this is the time to do it. Like I mentioned, your product services may collapse, may not have the market. What are the other things that have potential, that have a huge opportunity? This is the time to do a lot of research. So I'm going to go beyond and go future. And I'm going to look at how things are moving globally. What are the trends that are building up? What are the things that will have more traction? So that research needs to happen big time as, as, as I move forward. And then very critical is also the other research that I need to do. What are the client preferences that I see in the market? I think very important is to get in touch with certain clients, do some kind of a connect program, contact program, and really understand from them if they have been using a product of ours, how would they want it to be seen in future? So it's very important to do that connect. We have always done client or customer satisfaction thing. I think this, I'm talking more about research where you're talking again future and where again, the clients can become a huge, piece in the whole play to really guide us as to what they are looking for. So let's not create something in, in isolation. I think it's in, in the connected world today, which is becoming even more connected. It is very important that we reach out to as many people as possible. And among those people, very, very critical are the clients and, and we need to really touch base with them. Research the products and services that have huge potential, like I mentioned. So look at within the industry, what are the type of products? So again, I'm being very, very specific here. What are the, so every, trust me, every product has a potential. If we get it right, if we do it right, if we deliver it right, there is a market out there. So we need to really be again, very choosy on what we are going to create, how we are going to create, how we are going to market it, and how we are going to take it to the world. So that becomes very critical again here, as much as possible, read up what is happening world across. A lot of reading is required. So here, if you would have remembered my first slide, I was using revisit, which was about an internal focus. Here I'm using the word research because this is very future focused. And I would urge all of you to read a lot. And this is again a godsend opportunity where we are getting time to read a lot. Yes, we might be watching Netflix. We might be binging on movies and series. But trust me, please spend time on reading also around your business or potential businesses, potential products. So please catch up on, on that as well. Also very, very critical would be the most important factor most of us as startups really look out for. And that is the funding options that are, are, are out there. Again, very critical. This is the time to really sit down, maybe reach out to your earlier fund people, any other fund companies that you can reach out to, 
these are the times again where money will be available yes people will be very very mindful of where they are going to invest the money but there will be opportunities and again as we need to become really smart and do a very very detailed homework before we really reach out to the funding people but we need to do research around here also who are the people who are still very active and out there to support the startup community so these these are the four things that i thought i'll leave with you from a research standpoint that look at the industry and the market look at the client please ask them what is going to work what is not going to work check out the products and services that have huge potential in future and also look at who are the people who could be probably my support from a funding uh, perspective moving forward which are the verticals to explore and and this i just did a bit of a my own reading of what i have been seeing globally and 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 what one really sees as as opportunities which are emerging uh, i'm sure so which some of them are already there but some of them will probably get tweaked a bit uh, some of them went could give a very new opportunity itself uh, so let us look at some of the verticals and these are no fixed thing you can go beyond this also i'm sure you will have your own list of verticals that can be explored but here are some that i thought i'll share with you and these are the areas that are of opportunity without any doubt i think top of the pile the kind of global attention healthcare has got trust me uh, whether you call it uh, 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 being selfish or whatever but i think this is the opportunity to go deeper into the whole business of healthcare thereby lies plenty of opportunities and and it can it can open up huge avenues of what one can really do from small setups to mid size setups to large organizations many things are going to happen in healthcare so healthcare itself if one can research a lot and look at what kind of products and services can be really taken out from healthcare and businesses built around it it can be a brilliant opportunity so one needs to really now this is something an area maybe you've never ever focused on healthcare you have been doing something else for instance all these years but this is the opportunity to look beyond what you've done so far and that is where the entrepreneurs really get tested that am i just comfortable with what i am doing or am i looking out for some things that that hold probably much more much more potential than what i am really doing right now number two very critical with the work from home uh, mode of thing the gamification the whole games business is going to go up big time uh, this this again not that it 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 was not there but i think the whole push will really come into it in a big way it's exactly like what we are going through right now through this webinar all the webinar platforms all the verticals the zoom of the world the microsoft teams of the world suddenly there's an absolute explosion of them and that is how the games thing will pick up because the schools are going to be more run from home things are going to be online so that is where people are going to have time to socialize as a family play things board games which are all online and that is an opportunity area that we need to really look at and really create something interesting out there the third vertical i would say is education i think again the time has come for online education so we have had the khan academies of the world doing so brilliant work for decade couple of decades now almost or probably a decade and a half but look at the foresight that was there in in that business that moment has come again education can provide multiple Uh, sub verticals it's not that you just pick up one piece you can just pick up a little piece out of education and build a business around it anybody who had taken a leap around education 5 years 7 years back are definitely going to be the in the lead but is there is that enough that has been done i think india being such a huge organ uh, such a huge country also globally i think education can be a big game changer it can be a big play not only from school going to college going to mbas engineering everything is going to definitely get somewhat disrupted for sure so there's lots that can happen uh, there as well fourth vertical that i see very clearly is training a uh, lot of lot of uh, I, i would say again the players who got into e learning uh, a bit early uh, definitely have an advantage right now but again you can still be very smart around creating content for training 
and really conducting programs through such verticals, through such plot platforms, and yet create a name for yourself. Again, here, you can really pick up a niche area, develop and go deep into it and design some interesting online programs where people really benefit out of it, out of their time from work from home. So that is something that you could really look at and, and work on. The fifth area that I think is delivery. Uh, delivery in, in every sense I might talk about. As we have seen, uh, and I, I had stepped out yesterday to buy some grocery and I saw so many Swiggy pe uh, people on the road. Uh, so very, very important is the delivery thing. Again, people who came into this two, three years back, four years back, absolutely the time to really go big and and yet it it still has a lot of opportunity for other smaller players to come in and do local stuff you can localize the whole delivery model so that is something that one could really look at as an opportunity from a business standpoint the next one i would say is work from home support now this work from home itself can be seen as a business opportunity is what i see how do i build a work from home support system that means, can I build an e kind of a nice support thing where it typically is like a plug and play thing uh, and you, you create a workstation at home for people. Now that could be a huge opportunity that comes with technology, that comes with logistics, that comes with whatever furniture. Is that possible to do? Absolutely, it is possible. So it's like whatever people would do typically at our offices, come overnight, just set up workstations. Can I create work from home workstations that is an opportunity that I see as a huge one, which one can really exploit. Next one, very interesting is I think after all, all of us have gone through what we have gone through in these uh, just about a month or so, and, and there's more to come, is this whole focus on life skills. And, and that is another area that one can really look at of doing it differently, doing it interestingly, uh, and, and really build Again, programs around it or events around it, but everything again online and how to make it very, very interesting. Everybody is realizing the importance of life right now. Suddenly money has taken a back. Uh, everything has taken a back and people are now actually looking, staring at life and death. And that is where the survival will become very important. How do I really make a life of my life in such times? I mean, that is going to be very, very important. So that has to be looked at as a huge business opportunity. And, and again, from this, pick up little pieces around which you can bring some very interesting business model and do some great job around it. The last one I would say is, is which will keep growing exponentially will be e-commerce. I, I think again here, while the big players are there, the smaller players will still have a lot of opportunity out there. Uh, I have been, uh, again, witness to a lot of e-commerce companies doing uh, interesting work uh, uh, and, and, and I feel their time has come now. So this is, again, a good time to be very smart around the e-commerce model, not hire big. I think just be lean and smart and yet do a terrific job of doing e-commerce around uh, and, and clubbing it with the delivery model, which is where it can become a very interesting vertical. So those are some of the five, six, six, seven uh, verticals that came to my mind. And because paucity of time, I thought I'll share these verticals uh, with you. And I, I, I'm, I, I hope some, some of these really trigger some thoughts in you and, and you are keen to really take up some of them as a business opportunity. Brings me to the last slide. And I, re I really near about uh, 240 right now. So the last slide is again an uh, interesting uh, uh, quote. And this is from Judy Smith. Uh, uh, she's a founder of Smith & Company uh, back in US. Uh, and and she said it right again. There's always an opportunity with crisis. Just as it forces an individual to look inside himself, it forces a company to re-examine its policies and practices. So please understand in this quote, the most important piece is the little phrase to look inside himself. So I think this is the time, opportunity that we have all got to introspect really deeply of who am I, what do I want to do, what is my purpose, what else can I do beyond what I have done so far. And there it becomes very critical is, am I re-examining how my organization is working and how we are doing?
So I can take few questions before I go to the last slide. Any questions right now I can take up. You can type in the questions. Hello. Uh, yeah. So we are starting the Q&A session. Would request you all to post your questions on the chat. So Rajiv, there's a question from Mr. Adil Habib. He is okay. suggesting uh, that how do we, uh, we are a service industry and how do we, uh, the work from home does not uh, uh, work for him. It doesn't help uh, their organization. Uh, so yes. why don't you share some thoughts about that? So very, very important. I think very clearly the service sector will be hit and it's a very important and very valid question. It's if you think, there is no way to really automate any of the service model that you have, mm -hmm. then yes, please take a very, very hard call whether we should be in that business or not. So that's that I'll leave as a thought with you because a lot of disruption is going to happen in the service where you just can't venture out. If you are in the essential services business, like you see the government's really allowing and probably more easing off will, will happen as time uh, See, if, as, as time comes up, I think if we can get into certain businesses which fall into the essential services there, you get an air or a, a room to really survive and still function. But if you are in a, in a business where the services are pure, man-driven, where you need to go out and which is part of non-essential, very, very hard times for you ahead. That, that's, that's, a, that's the message that I can leave with you. Very difficult right now. Uh, okay, so there is one another question from Mr. Prakash. He's asking that how do we develop trust factor on employees who are working from home? Okay, very, very interesting question. Uh, again, here my suggestion would be whenever you've gone on a work from home mode, it is important uh, and, and, and I had done a little uh, video on it as well earlier in mid-March uh, where I had talked about three things. Uh, where you need to really prepare your team uh, for the work from home model. Uh, you need to then communicate uh, about the whole model. And then, of course, you put into action the whole model. So those are the three steps that I talked about, and I'm kind of repeating them here because I felt that was an interesting structure to have. Uh, the very first thing is, is about planning and, and preparing, so which is important. How the whole thing is going to work when we are on a virtual mode. And that is where the whole scheduling, the whole uh, uh, kind of uh, daily work, how the whole uh, plan needs to work, that needs to be really shared with everybody uh, upfront and, and so that everybody is almost working like they are in office. And number two, very important is the communication part of it, that you must do a lot of communication around how things are going to work, how discipline is very important and how everybody needs to be accessible. And then you put the action where you are, then checking out people, are they accessible, not accessible? I think a lot of organization in the last two weeks have got a lot of learning from their work from home model, and they are putting into, plugging in a lot of holes as to how to further make it more productive. But it is a model that can be made to work. And trust me, uh, when you ask the word, when you use the word trust, I, it, it applies to both. As much as to the manager, the discipline needs to be at the manager end and as much it needs to be at the end of the employees. Uh, my sense, like I said in, in the, during my presentation also, this, these are such times that where the employees are also equally as much engaged as you are engaged in business. A uh, lot of people I've heard, uh, you know, globally, I've been speaking to people in US, Australia, uh, people have been talking, probably they are doing more right now from a work from home, more extra hours happening. I don't know whether that's a good sign. I mean, somewhere you need to have the balance. But I feel people are hugely engaged. They want to be seen. They want to be visible. They want to be accessible. So the whole reporting pattern needs to be put into place. Every daily report needs to come into play. Google Docs for such times are brilliant platforms to use. So please get used to Google Docs which is a common doc being used with the, with the team. I think those are some of the tools that we need to use. And also, if you're doing meetings, like I mentioned earlier, Google Hangout, whether it is your Microsoft Teams, again, get used to such 
model such platforms to keep your team engaged and keep having the meetings virtual ones where you know very clearly everybody is clued on and everybody is giving their 100 percent trust in these times is there uh, i don't think you need to really push that too much yes there will be one-off cases where you need to take more disciplinary action than anything else the large majority is very much glued on and very much engaged based on my two weeks of experience okay so there is one another question asked by mr bk das that uh, customers are not ready to pay the dues at this moment so what will be the process to get that yeah that's that's again an interesting question and all of us are going through that and we are already getting messages that you know we need to delay this stagger it probably pay in, in bits and pieces uh, please understand everybody is, is struck uh, equally so uh, uh, there will be situations where the payments will get impacted they will get deferred uh, again this brings us to the trust factor uh, unless somebody really goes bust and your money is all lost that's an extreme situation but my sense is again as much as possible people are trying to be uh, again very understanding in this whole situation and and sharing that you know we will pay whenever good times come or they are also saying we will pay in parts and bits i think those 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 will happen uh, that's again a reality uh, it's the way we are what we are going through with our employees uh, you know when we want to pay salary we are struggling with that similarly will be the outside situation where some payments are due and the payments are not coming in uh, my sense is uh, we have not yet seen the worst of it i think this month of april will really will really be a very hard month for us nobody knows how and what happens after 14th of april uh, so things can go worse and, and so we need to be really prepared rather than getting really hassled i don't know whether you should really go legal in, in this kind of a situation you can go legal but i think everybody will just plead and beg and make you uh, understand probably that he or she is in the same situation as you are so i think somewhere if we can manage with our whatever finances are there if we can be smart around it if we can uh, sustain for some time uh, yet request them uh, it's it's like small things like the landlords being requested right now that you know since we are not utilizing the office space why should we pay and i'm sure the landlord will come back and say you know pay us something so it, the, these things are going to happen uh, we need to be prepared for them uh, we need to be really uh, financially be managing our situation uh, uh, you know uh, more judiciously and and really think of where we are spending why we are spending and uh, you know uh, be hopeful uh, that that the money will come in well uh, there is one another question asked by mr aman that do we have to stress for job rotation as part of employees productivity while doing work from home do they need to stress about it i think uh, uh, that's a great idea uh, honestly and uh, uh, whenever the situation comes where you're ending up uh, probably cutting jobs in your team uh, that's the time and and you should have started doing your homework right now also of seeing which are your key people whom you would retain come what may and who are the people probably you might let go whenever the situation arises now which means that whenever if i have thought of who are the guys to be retained in the team i need to definitely multi skill them this is the time to get multitasking in place that's very very critical and that means that people need to be rotated they need to take additional responsibilities as they work from home and that is where I, I was just sharing with somebody just yesterday that the you know we have been talking about lean management for so many years but this is the real moment for lean management has come now where you where every little penny is going to be questioned every little headcount is going to be questioned every little practice that we are doing is going to be questioned so yes the whole job rotation piece will come into a play big big way and which means that people need to take on additional responsibilities and we should plan for that very much 
we have one another question from Mr. Deepak, who's asking that, uh, can you suggest some some of the tools required for work from home? Uh, like I mentioned, uh, if, if you are uh, uh, there on Outlook, or if you use, say, for instance, I, uh, one of the uh, platforms that I've been using extensively is if you are on, if you have taken Office 365 from Microsoft, they have a brilliant uh, platform called Microsoft Teams. Uh, it's a very easy to use platform. Uh, you can have uh, interactions, you can have meetings, you can do reviews there. Excellent uh, platform to have. You could you have Zoom. Again, you can do meetings around that also. Like I mentioned, these are the platforms that you can use. Google Hangout is there where again, you can do a lot of uh, interactions from a pure recording or report uh, presentation or report management. You have the Google Docs, which is just brilliant. Again, easy to use. You just need to practice it, get used to it, and I'm sure you will get a grip around it. The world uses it and it, it's time that everybody gets onto it. So those those are two three tools that are there. The other thing that of course I will mention is also uh, you know the way you operate from home. Again, create a typical little workstation somewhere at your place. You you know so so a bit of seriousness needs to be there around uh, working from home. It shouldn't be that you are just waking up from, uh, and and then you are lying in the bed and you are you know operating from the bed itself. I think that's the worst thing that you can do from work from home. So have some place where you can sit and there is a background which is completely clean and neat. There is nothing behind. I think just operate like you're operating in an office. So those those are some of the two, three things that I can leave with you. Uh, and, and, and these tools are all these tools that I mentioned about the tech tools. They're going to go big only and, and, and a lot of us will be using them for the benefit of everybody. Uh, there is one another question asked by Mr. Bhagwan that how do we create an opportunity in any business? Well, it, it will be important uh, to look at, like I said, uh, can you do research of, of that business in the market? It, does it have any potential of that? Which means that you need to really go out asking, uh, which again I mentioned about checking with clients, about uh, checking with consumers. Uh, what are their preferences that is very very important so that is the data gathering needs to happen in this moment can i create some interesting smart formats for instance again google docs provides you that opportunity or or for instance uh, survey monkey for instance now those are tools where you can create a survey format immediately and, and you can gather a lot of data which should give you a lot of insights to really see whether this business really does have a, a chance or not in the market so I need to be in a data gathering mode right now because I am working from home. Uh, I can do that. I have time right now. So I should be utilizing this time to really so that, you know, why do we get gather data? I think it's very important. Data gathering helps me to be more scientific in taking my decisions. I think that is where data is becoming so critical and that helps me in taking sound decisions, informed decisions. And that's where probably the opportunities will also throw up. So very important is to also look at, are we gathering enough data to really be guided in the right manner and really look at opportunities within our businesses, either existing or potential. Okay, so I think uh, we are over with the uh, chats as of now, and I would request uh, Sandeepan to please uh, say something. Uh, I think uh, we should call uh, yes, it's a good session we have and and uh, the reason we thought to have this session is personally uh, as an entrepreneur I felt uh, we as an organization can evolve uh, from this crisis of uh, COVID-19 a uh, couple of things which I thought I can share with you is like we, we are we run a call center we never imagined that all of us will be working from home and still uh, able to uh, support our clients uh, that helps me uh, to to this experience will definitely help me as an organ as, as a person to 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 scale up without even investing on the basic office infrastructure in future. So that's something which I thought I'd share. 
apart from that i, I think we have some really good questions we have a lot of other questions which i don't think we have time to uh, to take up right now but uh, i'm sure if we possible we will mail uh, uh, ask rajnish to share his views and we can mail uh, uh, this uh, you know, his response to all of you individually so that you can get the best out of this session i think uh, that should be good enough for us to conclude thank you rajnish i think it was a really pleasure to have you uh, as always and and the the insights which were really been uh, good and, and very practical and i hope it will help all of us uh, who are part of this session to to take an informed uh, decisions uh, to run their organizations uh, in a more systematic and a, a better manner Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, everyone. Here I would, thank you. Here would I like to thank Rajneesh and Sandeepan for your time. And we thank you all the attending the webinar. And we hope the webinar has been informative. We shall also be sharing the presentation and the recording with you for your reference shortly. If you have any other questions, you can write to us on s.ray at smbconnect.in. Thank you once again for you, for your time. Have a good day. The webinar ends here.